Does math ever make you feel like this? Yeah, that's me most of the time. So here's the thing. Math has always been my most favorite subject in school. Up until I took, I think, trigonometry. Yeah, up until I took trigonometry and pre-calculus, math has always come naturally very easy to me. I loved it. It was my favorite. I loved the math, like the post-math high you would get after you solved the problem. And I just liked anything that came easy to me, you know? I got a huge reality check when I took trigonometry and I failed it. Uh, how many times? Two or three times. And I had to retake it a bunch of times. And I mean, I was also struggling with depression during that time, but like that was a hard class. <laughs> I am not a professional, by the way. I'm just a young woman making YouTube videos, trying to give advice and tips for my fellow computer science students and programmers. So uh, for those of you don't, that don't find my videos very helpful, I don't really care. I'm not a professional. I'm just here to help and I think it's better to spread positive vibes rather than just bashing people for trying to help others out. So you are coming to my videos just to put me down then shame on you because all you're doing is criticizing. <laughs> but then again, I don't really care what you have to say. <laughs> However, I had to pass that class somehow, right? And I have to somehow go through these classes. Probably the number one question I get, whether it's in my emails, my Instagram DMs, or just in my comments down below. I get asked this question all the time and it's, how do I like math? Because it's required for my degree and I don't like it. Same here, sister and, and brother, sister. I, I don't talk like that, by the way. <laughs> well, who am I? But for me, these are things that helps me. So I hope they help you. So first, I think you should love patterns. I think most people love patterns, whether it's in design or uh, just seeing things get done. I'm a little bit of both. I love seeing patterns. It excites me, but then I also like to see a challenge. So you kind of get a little bit of that with math, you know? What gets me through math is definitely learning how to see and analyze patterns. So I would try and focus on that. Another one is I think in your spare time, you should solve some puzzles. I find that when I just walk away from my math problems that are frustrating me or irritating me or just for some reason, my brain has shut off, doesn't want to retain any information whatsoever. I find it's best to walk away and do something else such as a puzzle. I feel like you are working the same kind of muscles in your brain. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm not professional, but to me, it's kind of a similar feeling when I see puzzle pieces going together. To me, it's like a visual representation of what like a math problem, how a math problem works. I don't know. I, I, now as I say that out loud, it doesn't make any sense. In my head it did, but I would recommend something like that. Another thing that did help me a lot is uh, I would try and do something completely different such as exercising because I don't know it's I just find that anytime you feel frustrated with anything that if you do something else and come back to it later you find that you just have a much clearer mind. I think like if your mind gets way too busy then it's hard to do math problems so yeah that, that's another really good one. Now I'm sure everyone and all your teachers and your mom and your dad and your dog have told you this but <laughs> try and apply those math problems to your real life and you're probably thinking Brianna how do I apply the Pythagorean theorem into my daily life I just don't see how that's possible me too that's what the majority of my math problems sure when I took algebra and you know elementary school mathematics uh, elementary school mathematics of course it's easy to you know apply that to your real life hmm Sally had 50 apples then she ate 49 how many apples does she have left so you know those you know, those word problems can be a little bit over dramatic and over the top, but at least we can somewhat relate to them, right? Well, okay, in this case, the Pythagorean theorem probably won't relate that well in your life, but maybe you can come up with like a little like expression in your head or try to make some pretty artwork that helps you remember the formula or um, just try and find any little similarity in the math problem that can apply to your real life. It can be the dumbest, most simple thing but I think just the more you do that the more you can see how it may or may not apply in your real life. I mean I have to say the majority of math I've learned does not apply in my real life but I think it does access this part of your brain that helps you with critical thinking and that helps you be a better programmer. So I mean I think you know math is not just some dumb requirement
requirement you have to take, I think it definitely has a lot of benefits that are super, super useful. Like I mentioned earlier, that post math high is amazing. I live for that. It's like a drug to me. Okay, not literally, but I, I just really like that feeling. It's like when you go for a run and then afterwards like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, that's how I feel after I do a problem. I have definitely happy danced by myself at my desk many times because I figured out a problem that took me forever. I remember one time it took me like three days to do this one math problem and one time it just clicked and then I literally like like cheered. I was so excited. So don't do drugs, stay in school, but do math. It's the same thing. I said math, not meth. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna probably get this video taken down by YouTube. It's starting to get inappropriate. <laughs> okay, I think a lot of parents especially will disagree with this one, but I don't. Um, <clears throat> I am not going to mention what personal problems I have, but um, because of some of my personal problems, it makes me kind of slower in school. In some areas, I am much faster than other people, but in some areas, because of my personal problems, which I will not mention, because um, it's personal, duh, it slows me down. I think it's important to understand your pace instead of being yourself upward, just accept it and go at your pace because otherwise you'll never get there. You'll end up being like me that took a break from school for four years because I got really burnt out. And then, you know, now I'm just so much older and I wish that I just went slower instead of doing more than what I could handle, you know? So what I'm trying to say is it's okay to scale back if your classes are too hard. If you, okay, this is, you know, not a lot of people agree with this, but I strongly believe in this. If the class you're taking right now is too hard for you, drop out of it and take a different class that's easier. Like, I know that probably wastes a lot of time and money, but I think in the long run, I think you need to determine what's worth it. You know, is it worth maybe potentially being miserable the whole semester and maybe failing this class or just barely getting by just so you can get to the next class and do that all over again? Or would you rather go back and relearn what you've already learned to prepare you for the next class? Or, you know, I know there are lots of resources out there, but but if you're already feeling burnt out with a full schedule and on top of that, you need to spend a lot more time maybe getting tutoring or doing more research, maybe that's not for you. Some people can do that, but some people can't. And you know, that's okay. It's okay to scale back. This isn't a race. And if someone else, I'm gonna get emotional here, but if someone else is telling you how fast you should go in school, then honestly, screw them. Even if it comes from a good place, like they don't know who you are and they need to accept you for who you are. So sorry, that's just, my two cents. <laughs> I just had to say that. Which brings me to my next point. Repeat classes if necessary. I did that. Yeah, it cost me a lot of time and money, but I'm so glad that I did. Which brings me to my next point I already kind of mentioned. Don't listen to the people that say you can't do it. I am a prime example where I've had way more people telling me I will never do it versus people cheering me on. Trust me, I have had relatives, family members, friends, teachers, professors. I've had so many people telling me that maybe computer science is not for me. It's, you know, don't do it. You shouldn't be doing it. Like basically putting me down, like don't take these math classes. You won't be able to handle it. Well, sorry, screw you. I'm going to take those math classes if I want to. So, and that also includes my YouTube commenters. I have a surprising amount of people that feel the need to analyze my life and tell me I should drop out of school. And I'm like, what? I can't hear you because I'm busy over here living my life and working hard towards my goals and dreams. So if you want to go and put other people down, this is not the place. <laughs> and the next one is to treat math like a game. Just try to find any way to have fun with it. I try to, I try to, like, for example, I'm learning some really boring things about formulas and polynomials at the moment. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, you know, this is pretty straightforward, but it's kind of boring. And when it gets boring for me, it's hard for me to kind of, you know, retain the information. So I'm trying to find a way to have fun with it. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to give an example for me, but like my examples aren't very good because oh, like, well, works for me might not always work for you. So maybe if you want to make a game, maybe you can be like, uh, I don't know, like uh, if I can finish this as fast as possible, I can reward myself. I don't know. That's not really a game, but I don't know that that's up for you to decide. For me, I don't really need that as much, but sometimes I do turn 
certain problems into like a small like little game like trying to see how many of these problems can I get right and if I get them right I can move on and ooh, exciting I don't know not not that fun when I say it out loud but at the time it's fun <laughs> you'll be surprised how creative you will be in those moments because you'll be so desperate because you're so bored so then your mind will come up with games and then just for some reason anything sounds like it's a lot of fun and another one to always remember is that practice makes perfect if you don't understand it just be patient keep trying just go you know work on that problem over and over again keep practicing eventually you will get it even if it takes longer than what you hoped for that's okay you just have to keep practicing and eventually it will click and my last tip is to watch some free youtube videos my personal favorite are from khan academy he makes so i don't know if he's a professor or anything i just watch his videos but he just makes learning math fun so why not try it i enjoy the way he teaches he gives some fun examples and he speaks in a way that i can really obtain and learn from so i don't know give it a try it could be a nice break from listening to your professor or reading from a textbook all right now it's my turn to ask you guys if there are any tips you can share with me how you have dealt with liking math and no i'm not talking to the people that think they have it all figured out and want to shame people that don't like math and saying oh well i just like math because i was born this way sorry there's no room for that here i'm talking about the people that have struggled with math and they have overcome some obstacles i'd love to hear your tips leave them down below well thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video make sure to subscribe and thumbs up this video also follow me on instagram and yeah see ya bye